any type of resource that will be mentioned will also be included in the recording that you're receiving. I just like to make a suggestion for those of you who are interested in making Aliyah in the next eight to 10 months and haven't yet downloaded or uploaded your application for Aliyah, now's a good time to do so just to help us get you started and thinking more about Tel Aviv as your community of choice. I'm joined by Netta Bernstein, who is the Tel Aviv Municipal Coordinator for Tel Aviv. Netta is, I will tell you, lovely and knows so much about the Tel Aviv community that she's going to share with you. Followed by what she has to share, we're going to hear stories from our guests this evening, those who are residents of Tel Aviv, some for a longer period of time, some for a shorter period of time. So you can share in their journey and think about how you can use their experiences to your benefit as you begin to plan your own Aliyah. Netta, if you could please share with us everything you would like to share about Tel Aviv. I'll be happy to. Thank you, Miriam, and welcome everyone. Um, today I'm gonna speak about the best city um, in Israel, which is Tel Aviv. I'm gonna speak uh, professionally, but I also as a resident, I'm a fan of the city. Um, and I'm going to share with you information that's going to help you make a decision whether to move to Tel Aviv or not. Probably yes, uh, hopefully. Um, I'm going to start with a few slides. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, so in Tel Aviv, we have a whole department in the municipality for immigration absorption. Uh, which I, I am the project coordinator for English speaking Olim. That means from the United States, from England, from many, many different countries in Europe also. Um, we have many, many Olim in Tel Aviv. Um, I think we have the most Olim in Israel. I mean, we like to say that. Um, we compete with Jerusalem usually, but I think we're winning. Um, in 2020, for example, which was a hard year for, uh, for Aliyah and for everything else pretty much because of COVID. Uh, we did have more than 2,000 new Olim that made Aliyah to Tel Aviv, and they joined more than 30,000 Olim from around the world who made the Tel Aviv their home in the last decade. Um, so our department um, that is belong to the municipality is devoted to helping each new resident to build his or her future in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv Yafo, by the way, it's Tel Aviv and Yafo, Jaffa. Um, to integrate into the city cultural and community ecosystems. Um, so how are we doing it? We're doing it by a lot of events um, that we are doing for our Olim community. In our department, our activities are divided by language usually to make it easier for Olim. So we have English, we have French, um, we have Spanish and we have Russian. Um, I'm in charge of the English speaking audience, as I said. Um, so have, we have many different events for many different age group or audiences. Uh, we have young people like young adults and we have young families. Uh, we have uh, people who work in high tech and we have uh, programs for teachers. We have many, many different activities. Uh, we work closely with Ezra um, and I let my, my friends here, uh, Terry and Sunny, talk about Ezra uh, right after. Um, but we're doing a lot of events. It's about three to four events um, that we're doing per month. Now we're starting to go back to live events, to actually meeting people, which is really nice. But even during COVID, um, we did events during the whole time um, on Zoom. But now we're starting to actually meet people. And it's very exciting. Um, I don't know if you know, but today is a big day in Israel. We, don't, we no longer have the COVID rules. Um, so we are excited about it and hopefully we'll see you here in person um, um, shortly. We also provide personal assistance. You get your, your, your Aliyah rights, your Aliyah benefits, you get it from the Strada Klikta, okay, for the Ministry um, of, uh, of Aliyah and Klikta. Um, but we are helping you with other things. If it's within the municipality, like discounts that you're getting as an Ole Hadash um, for, the, for the tax, um, the city tax, city poverty tax, it's called Arnona in Hebrew. Uh, we can help you with that. There's a really nice, um, nice uh, discount for Olim. And also anything else that the municipality provides, any other services, community centers, 
anything you want to ask us about parking, about bikes, any questions regarding the city, we're always happy to help. And also we are helping you with government offices if needed to make appointments. As we know it's a struggle at the beginning with the Hebrew and we are always happy to help. A little bit about our wonderful city. So I'm actually gonna start with uh, some TLV geography. Um, this is a very nice map, very colorful, very messy, Balagan, like the city, it's very colorful and colorful and very messy. Um, that's why we like it. Um, you might be used to a grid uh, if you live in New York or Philadelphia or Chicago. Um, Tel Aviv is definitely not a grid. <laughs> you can see it um, in this map, um, but it's still wonderful. So I'm going to share with you a map of a different neighborhoods in Tel Aviv and tell you a little bit about um, some neighborhoods I think might be relevant uh, for you. In general, we have a limb in all neighborhoods. There isn't like one in particular um, that I think is best for Olim. All neighborhoods have Olim. Um, some have more Olim and some have less Olim, but walking the streets of Tel Aviv, you always hear English. Uh, no matter where you're going, even with no tourists, because um, we didn't have any tourists for the last year and a half. Um, but English is a very common language in most of the neighborhoods. Um, so you, the red lines are divided by neighborhoods. There are many different neighborhoods, but I'm going to speak um, only about uh, a few of them. Um, so this is Park Hayalkon. This is Hayalkon Park, and it divides the city to like the center and the south, and then the north. Um, so the north neighborhoods are Ramat Aviv, Neve Avivim, um, Lamed, um, uh, there are many different neighborhoods, um, and I think there's a very big um, English-speaking community um, in these neighborhoods. Um, a lot of young families, but not, not just. Um, so this is um, an area, it's more, let's say, residential, suburban, still a city though, it's not suburbs, it's still like in the city, but it's, let's say, more quiet. Um, and as you go south, you have the old north of Tel Aviv, which is also, it's the, it's the south part of Park Ayalkon, of Ayalkon Park. Um, it's also great neighborhoods, also a lot of English speakers all around, community centers. Um, and this whole thing is the beach. There's a beach, the, Tel Aviv has a beach from south to north. So you're always close to the beach if you live in the west part um, of Tel Aviv. You can always walk to the beach. It's really nice. Um, and then we have the center of Tel Aviv, which is um, uh, the Yemenite quarter, Kerem Atemanim, um, the Dizengoff area. You heard about Dizengoff Street and Dizengoff Center, which is, a, I think, uh, one of the most famous like, shopping centers um, in Tel Aviv. It's uh, where all the bars are. And, uh, but it's still like there's a lot, like many, many, like, uh, small streets and quiet, even in the in the center of Tel Aviv and in the old north, you can always find, even it's, if in, it's in the center, there's always a quiet street. Um, you can walk three minutes and be at the beach or uh, somewhere that is a uh, very center. Um, and then we have the south of Tel Aviv and Yafo. Um, Yafo is Jaffa. It's also, also Yafo is divided to different neighborhoods. I think most popular one is um, the, the one that is by the flea market, Shuka Pishpishim. There are also a lot of Olim that decides to, um, to go there to live, which is also really nice. Um, and then we have the east part of Tel Aviv, which is already like the border with um, our uh, neighbor cities, which is Ramat Gan, Giva Time, which are, which are also great cities, uh, but they're not Tel Aviv. <laughs> even though they're very close. Um, and my friends here will speak. Um, I love it, my friends here. When, when you talk, just speak. Um, tell us where you live and what you love about uh, your neighborhood. Um, and you can ask us questions about specific neighborhoods. And I also want to share uh, my contact details if you have specific questions. Um, just so you know, the rent or buying an, an uh, apartment or a place in Tel Aviv, um, it, it's pretty much a range. Um, it's not a very, very big difference between the center and the south to the, to the north of Tel Aviv. 
um, the range is pretty much the same. Tel Aviv is an expensive city, um, either center, south, or north. Um, you should know that too. Um, so these are the neighborhoods that I spoke about. Um, and Ulpanim, okay? When you come to Israel, we want you to study Hebrew. Um, doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you think you don't need to study Hebrew, you definitely need to learn some Hebrew. Um, it's just, you know, it's even though you can manage with English here for years, I think it's very important to, um, to learn some Hebrew, even like the basics. Um, it's very, very important. So we provide, we have two city Ulpanim. Um, one is the Ulpan Nevet Tzedek, which Nevet Tzedek is also a really nice neighborhood in Tel Aviv. And the other one is Ulpan Goldor, which is the biggest, most famous. Um, and it's divided obviously by your Hebrew level. And this is, you can use the voucher that you get from the Strada Klita um, as an Ole Chadash to go to these Ulpanim. We also have a lot of private ulpanim, which are also great ulpanim, and you still uh, can use, you are paying the private ulpanim, and then you get reimbursed from Misrada Krita. Um, again, I, I'll be happy to share with you a list of ulpanim when it will be relevant to you. Don't skip that. You deserve it as an ole chadash. Use it, it's important. Um, some resource if you want to explore a little bit more. So we have a great Facebook group. Um, it's called Olim in Tel Aviv Yafo. I always share our events there. So you can take a look just to uh, get a sense of the different events that we are having. Um, and there's a municipality website. I'm going to share the links in the chat or Miriam or Josh can send it um, to you a little later. In the municipality website, we have a whole... Um, a whole new residence area in English that you can read and understand what you need to do as a new resident in Tel Aviv, how to get the benefits and how to contact us and everything that you need to know. Um, this is my contact information, my email and my office number. And now I'm gonna show you a short video about our amazing city. Assuming most of you have been here before, um, but it's just like you can get, never get enough. That's how I feel at least. So let's see that. It shows that you're proud of your city, Neta. And it's always Sorry, good. Sorry, Miriam? It shows that you're proud of where you live. That's for sure. I love it here. We talked about it yesterday, remember? <laughs> After the video, I'd like to share um, two questions that have been asked on the chat, OK? Sounds good. Excellent. Something not working. And I've been told there's no sound. Yeah, there was no sound. Okay, sorry. I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even with no sound, though, you could see such a <laughs> such opportunity for culture and and food because we're True. Jewish, so we need to eat every you know hour or so. But just looking at the diversity and, and the cultural events, you're going to start it again. You think? I think so. Let's let's give it a try. Okay. There you go. Here now. Tel Aviv is a vibrant coastal city. As the cultural capital of Israel, Tel Aviv offers an outstanding variety of theaters, music venues, opera, museums, libraries, and more. If you consider yourself a foodie, the culinary options in Tel Aviv are endless, from chef restaurants to delicious Israeli street food. And of course, coffee around every corner. Tel Aviv has 320 sunny days a year, so almost every day is a good day to visit the beach with 14 kilometers of urban beaches, you can start your day with a run or a sand. Dozens of parks are available all around the city, where you can get fresh air and relax. 
At the evening, Tel Aviv opens its bars and clubs for an amazing nightlife experience. Dozens of community centers are spread across the city and offer sponsored activities for elderly, adults and kids. Community gatherings are the beating heart of Tel Aviv and what makes it a welcoming home for everyone. Tel Aviv, a non-stop city. So that was a real quick um, uh, video of how fun it is to live in Tel Aviv. But um, you, can, you can feel at home here and also experience the wonderful city like as a tourist, if you know what I mean. Um, even I, I've been living here for many, many years and I still like, I still have fun to go to the coffee and to go to the beach. Um, it's never enough for me. But you can also decide that you want to do something quiet and just stay at home. There's many, many parks, even though it's a residential area and it's a little crowded. Um, there are a lot of uh, parks and like green spots and the beach is also relaxing and you can just choose your, you know, your, your corner um, in Tel Aviv and just feel at home and enjoy all the advantage, all the advantage that tourists are um, enjoying. Um, so I think uh, that's it, Miriam, I'm ready for your questions. Okay, so one person wanted to know about the name of the neighborhood where Habima and Hachashmonaim Street are. Okay, so so this is called, um, it's called the Habima area. I think that's the most common uh, name of it, but it's Lev Tel Aviv, the center of Tel Aviv. Okay, that's the official name of, um, of the neighborhood. Um, but if you're looking for apartments, it's, you can say like a, a Habima area, um, but it's called Lev Tel Aviv. That's the official name. So that's a perfect segue to the other two questions. Just to clarify the municipality's role in assisting people in finding their apartments or your Mugan. So we can't assist you to find an apartment. That's not something um, that we are uh, providing, um, but there are a lot of realtors here in Tel Aviv. Um, there are websites that you can look Facebook groups if you are on Facebook. Um, my suggestion is Tel Aviv is very, uh, it's hard to find uh, a place. Uh, so you should make sure in advance that you know where you want to live and you know your options and you know the costs. And my advice, if you can afford it, then um, use a realtor because it's really hard to find a good apartment in Tel Aviv because everybody wants to live in Tel Aviv. And before we move on to our guests, um, someone's asked about the right neighborhood for someone who is modern Orthodox. So I think um, there isn't one right neighborhood. Um, I uh, see modern Orthodox everywhere. It depends. I think if you don't have kids that go to school, then it doesn't really matter. And But it, it, I think it matters if you want to find your synagogue. There are synagogues all around the city for modern Orthodox. Um, so I think if you do some research and um, look at different synagogues, this is the area where you like a synagogue, this is the area you want to live in, but it's literally all around the city. It doesn't matter if you don't have kids who are going to a modern Orthodox school, um, then it could be literally everywhere because um, a synagogue will be walking distance from you probably. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to our guests. Phyllis, hi. Hi. Um, we would love to hear your story, how you came to choose Tel Aviv as your community, when you made Aliyah, how you've made friends, how you've integrated, and what your Hebrew was like when you made Aliyah. Um, sure. Well, maybe I won't talk so much about that because that's still a work in progress, but so thank you to everybody. I want to start out by just letting people know that the folks who are on this call are tremendous and wonderful resources. Nefesh Benefesh, uh, Neta, and the Tel Aviv Municipality, and the ESRA organization. I can tell you that they have really helped make our Aliyah uh, as enriching as it's been so far. And we arrived in Israel in June of 2020, right in the middle of COVID. So, um, so we've been adjusting to the challenges of COVID. And now, of course, the great relief that comes as uh, the restrictions are being lifted. 
But um, so, so we live in the Hatikva neighborhood and the Hatikva neighborhood is Southeast Tel Aviv. There are um, three big markets in the city of Tel Aviv, the big public markets that you see pictures of and people really enjoy. The Hatikva market is one of them. And we, uh, I am actually, I was an urban planner by training. That was my professional career. So uh, understanding cities and helping to decide where I wanted to live was very much part of my professional uh, training and background. And so I will tell uh, the people who are listening that for us, my husband and myself in our search, we were sort of looking for several attributes in a city. We wanted a city that had a certain physical uh, beauty to it. And, and Tel Aviv is beautiful. You saw in some of the pictures and that's alluded to it, you have old buildings, you have new buildings, you have high rises. The neighborhood we live in is a very low scale neighborhood. Uh, none of the buildings can be more than three or four stories. Uh, you have charming wa uh, winding alleys, Nebet Tzedek, you have white boulevards like Rothschild. So you really can see a lot of it. Um, the beach, of course, Yarkon Park. I mean, the city has a wonderful, wonderful park system. That was really important to us. Transportation, it's easy to get around. Not only within Tel Aviv, we don't have a car. We're New Yorkers originally. And so having a car was somewhat of an anathema to us. Uh, we really enjoy being car free. You can take the bus anywhere. You can take taxis everywhere. Get Taxi is an amazing app to have. Um, traveling within the country. We travel by train. Our children live outside of Jerusalem. We have relatives in Naharia and, uh, and friends in Beersheba. We are able to visit them. It's comfortable, it's easy. So transportation and being able to get around. We ride bicycles and that's great too. So um, um, I wanna talk a little bit about the experience of Sager because hopefully no one who is making Aliyah after this point will have to deal with it. But I think it points to the strength of the city. And when you're thinking about where you wanna live, a lot of times you don't wanna live through the test, but speaking about the experience that we had, hopefully we'll, we'll inform decisions for people. Um, and we arrived naturally right into quarantine. We were in quarantine for two weeks. And then after our personal quarantine ended, of course, restaurants were closed. Uh, um, all the uh, public places, the, the museums, et cetera, theaters were closed. But the city went to great lengths to make programming available to people. Again, thanks to the municipality, thanks to ESRA. Um, we were able to participate in Zoom cultural events. We were actually able to take socially distanced walking tours of the city that, that, that were being offered. We were able to participate in a live concert in a community garden where they set up cafe tables at appropriate distances so that people could listen to live music. All of these things, again, you know, sponsored by the municipality, ways of helping us get out and begin to enjoy the city. We walked everywhere. If you can't travel outside of the city and you can't go to a museum, what better way to really experience and see what the city is like than to walk through the different neighborhoods and to really see them and live them. And that was great. So of course, now that things have started to open up, Tel Aviv is a world-class city. And we've been to the opera and thoroughly enjoyed it. We went to the Rubinstein um, piano recitals, which were extraordinary. We went to our first, uh, my husband is a cinephile and really loves film. And we went to our first uh, uh, film discussion and viewing, which was just really special and wonderful. So the city is up and running restaurants. Uh, those pictures made me super hungry there. And I just want to point out, um, Tel Aviv has a very vibrant kosher food scene. There are a lot of great kosher restaurants here. Um, this is correct about synagogues. Um, there are a lot of religious communities here in the city. It's, it's seen as a secular city, but I think for people who are religiously observant, you can feel very comfortable here. Shabbat really does feel like Shabbat, um, which is kind of nice. And the other thing I want to point out as well is it feels like a safe city. And I, uh, for the brief time that Opan was in person, I was in Opan Gordon, which is in the north of the city, and I took a bus from my neighborhood to get there. And I came home at 9.30 at night alone on the bus and walked from the bus station to my home and really felt safe and really felt comfortable. And so for people who are concerned about safety in a big city, I mean, like any city, there are certain neighborhoods I wouldn't necessarily walk around at night, but for the most part, the city feels very safe. So we, um, 
we really feel that the experience of sort of being very limited in what we could do forced us to look for and explore places we might not have seen otherwise. Now that we have the ability to take advantage of the museums and the restaurants and the cultural centers, it, it is like being a kid in a candy shop, especially for somebody, as I said, who, who lived in New York and was able to take advantage of, of all the many cultural institutions that are in New York. So I'm trying to keep myself to 10 minutes because I know there are a lot of people who also have good stories to tell. Um, so Akshab, Ani be Kita Arba, be Ulpan Lahinyan. And Ani Minasal, be Evrit, Kol Yom, Abal Akshab, Ani Hosheva Sheyotir, to Lidabar Banglit. Did you have even that much Hebrew when you first made Aliyah? So we had actually taken Opan in the United States in anticipation of our Aliyah. Um, and it helped a little bit because in terms of facility with reading an alphabet and knowing verb structures, we have a while to go. Um, I would encourage people if they can, and if you're thinking and you've got the ability to take an old punk class before you get here, um, it, it, it's good and it helps prep you a little bit and gets you ready. I will also say that, and it just, this is the one area we'll say Sager really did, was a setback. I think that, that, that um, for us personally, we're of an age group where uh, doing Zoom for old punk wasn't as effective as I would have liked it to have been. But, um, you know, everybody responds to that differently. So I, I and I'm not an educator, so I, I, I wouldn't pretend to have any expertise on how and, and people get, gain expertise in, in uh, language skills. Okay, Sunny, how are you doing? <laughs> Perfect, good evening, I'm Sunny. I was born and raised in America and for the last 30 years living in Israel, I represent Ezra. Um, my expanded family, Israel's largest English-speaking community, and our mission is, together with our great partners, is to make you feel right at home in Tel Aviv, personally, professionally, and socially. You can spice up your life, as you heard previously, in social and cultural activities, and you can be active in meaningful volunteering. You have uh, career growth possibilities and professional personal support services if it's needed. All tailored to help you acclimate in your new home in Tel Aviv and improve your quality of life. Uh, you're going to love it. What does Ezra stand for? Ezra is English Speaking Residents Association. Does it cost money to join? No, no, we have, uh, it doesn't cost money to join. We have branches uh, nationwide. Tel Aviv is a very strong community because there's a lot of English speakers uh, in Tel Aviv. Uh, first, only get free membership, so you can actually subscribe. Uh, we can share it with you and you can register. You can also receive Ezra Community uh, Magazine to really catch up on life in Israel. Um, and no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. It's a warm welcome for Olim, uh, and it's a big family. And like uh, Phyllis mentioned, and like Netta said, it's uh, on one hand, you can really enjoy like a worldwide standard city like New York that was mentioned. I'm from New York. Uh, any kind of art, culture, uh, and alongside that, you can really enjoy, it. I wouldn't say the suburbs, but you can enjoy really more quiet life if that's what you're looking for. Um, and it's a valuable city meaning it despite the fact that it's really spicy and there's a lot of activities as you saw in the video it also has a more uh, solid side uh, a, a religious side and it's really a very broad it's like a, a microcosmos of israel in tel aviv and you can really uh, can find anything for everyone and i think from my point of view from my experience many years ago that and i didn't have that when i came that today there's a lot of support and facilities that really um, help you feel right at home in Israel and in Tel Aviv. And that's not obvious. And not every city has that these services. So uh, thanks to the partners in Nefesh Benefesh and in and Netta and the Tel Aviv municipality and other organizations that are also involved in Tel Aviv, you really are uh, wrapped uh, to have a very soft landing and a warm, warm welcome and 
it, it's really an amazing city. I love it. So. Isn't it amazing all the resources that exist today that I really feel if you go in five year increments, there's just such an increase of what's available for all of us English speakers or immigrants to help each other and support each other, regardless of national security issues or just where to find, I don't know, the best restaurant in town. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, fair. Deborah, we haven't heard from you yet. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, Miriam. <clears throat> so I came to Tel Aviv close to, on 40 years ago in the early 80s, basically in the previous century. So <laughs> I'm a bit of a dinosaur. Um, the changes that have taken place in the city over this period have been absolutely amazing. Tel Aviv has gone from a rather unattractive city physically to an amazingly interesting city architecturally. Wherever you look, you're gonna find open green spaces and you're going to see people that are really enjoying life. And I think if anything characterizes life in Tel Aviv, it's that the residents enjoy life. And there are many, many things that you can do to enjoy yourselves, things that don't necessarily cost a lot of money. There are lots of open air events. The municipality certainly provides a wide variety of things from yoga on the roof of the municipality to uh, philharmonic concerts or opera performances in the summer in the Yarkon Park. Uh, walking tours of neighborhoods and just a plethora of wonderful, wonderful events that you can join. Uh, and of course, Ezra also offers a lot of events that are just one, a wonderful way to join and to meet people from your neighborhood or from other neighborhoods. Uh, some of the things that I can really say that I enjoy in Tel Aviv are the cultural aspects. You have the theater, you have the opera, you have art galleries. Uh, you have wonderful museums. And of course, most of these, including the opera and theaters, do offer translation. The opera has surtitles in English. Uh, and you also have evenings, or we did have before Corona, but I would imagine that it would go, it, it would go back to this. Um, evenings at theaters where they actually have simultaneous translation so you can rent or they simply give you the earphones so you can sit and enjoy a Hebrew play um, but have the English translation. So that's a definite bonus. And of course, art galleries, an amazing variety. Uh, generally, the entrance is free. And of course, then you have the sporting events. You have the beach, as, as has already been mentioned. You have wonderful uh, walks. You can walk actually from my neighborhood and I'm in the northern part of the city, um, which is near the Tel Aviv University. But from here, we can actually walk down to the beach and then walk all the way into Tel Aviv along the promenade. And the promenade, actually, if you're a good walker, you can walk all the way to Jaffa. So it really is lovely. And this is something that you can do any day almost any time of the day or any day of the week. And there's just so much out there that you can decide if you want to be part of this 24 seven culture, or if you just want to go out, come home, close your door and then have your own little uh, private world. Uh, the food that is available in Tel Aviv as we saw in the movie is also incredible. Again, you can go to a different restaurant every day, try out a different new, uh, type of food every day, and you still won't be able to manage to get to all the restaurants. Uh, for me, living in Tel Aviv is having your neighborhood coffee shop to go down to whenever the mood takes you, whenever the mood grabs you, uh, seeing familiar faces, and that is something that is very, very, very much part of what Tel Aviv is for me. Uh, the weather as well, people that are living currently in North America, um, you might not always have great weather. In Tel Aviv, the weather is always incredible. In summer, it does get a little bit warm, 
but the winter here is certainly not comparable to the winter in Europe or in North America. And although we might complain, um, I have Canadian friends who think that that's like, that the winter here is really like a, almost a summer's day. So all I can say is anybody that comes to Tel Aviv is going to in, meet with people from all over the world. People are generally very friendly. If you stop and ask somebody a question in the street, you'll approach one person and before you know it, they're gonna be three or four people discussing where you should or shouldn't go in order to solve your issue. And everybody's got their own opinion and their own version, but everybody's coming from a very good place and everybody genuinely wants to help you. So even if you don't speak the language, and of course I would recommend as somebody else mentioned, you know, do try and have as much Hebrew as possible before you come. It really is helpful. Um, and go to Pan, be part of the community. And Netta, uh, Netta mentioned the different neighborhoods. Now, over the years, I've noticed that the neighborhoods have become the center of where of your existence. So as whereas today, in the past at least, you might have needed to go down to Dizengoff to do some shopping. Dizengoff used to be known as the street with all the fashionable shops and that. But today in your own neighborhood and in almost every one of the neighborhoods that Netta mentioned, you can find everything you need, be it clothing, be it food, be it you name it, it's there, it's local. And I think this is becoming a trend and, and it's wonderful because you really don't need the transportation or if you have, you have the public transportation as well. Um, so things are becoming local, things are getting a very Tel aviv -y type flavor to it. And um, that's what I can say. Before we move on to you, Terry, two things that are in the chat. Phyllis, someone's asked if you could just repeat the neighborhood where you're living. Uh, the neighborhood is called the Hatikva neighborhood, where the Hatikva market is. It's um, southeast Tel Aviv. Thank you. And um, again, I apologize, Terry, um, but perhaps Netta, you want to answer or someone else? There's several comments, not necessarily questions, about the cost of living in Tel Aviv. And perhaps there is a secret that yet is yet to be told about more affordable areas. Who wants to so, comment? As I said, Tel Aviv is an expensive city, you know, it's a world-class city. Um, I don't want to compare it to New York or London, and, but these places are also expensive. Um, there are some neighborhoods who are more affordable. I think mostly in South Tel Aviv, maybe Southeast, Phyllis, maybe if you want to share, um, your uh, experience, it depends, also it depends on the building itself, you know, we have new buildings that are just built and in any neighborhood, or you have an older building, it's going to be cheaper to live at, so it really depends um, on, on the specific apartment, um, but most of the areas are expensive, there is no secret, the secret is people just love to live here, so they're willing to spend a lot uh, in order to do that. But um, even though there is so many things to do here, you can still like, once you settle in, um, I've been living here for years, it's not that I'm going out every day, it's not that I'm buying coffee out every day. Once you live here, it's not like being a tourist and like spending a lot of money every day. You just live your day-to-day -day life. Um, for me personally, I go to work, I go back home, I deal with my family. So it's, you know, it's, it's not necessarily um, to spend a lot of money, but the expenses the, the, to live here are, um, not cheap, but I will say that the Arnona, the city tax, um, the city power, property tax, first of all, you're getting a 90% discount, but that's for every city. Um, but even um, when uh, you get it for one year, when it's over, the city tax um, is still very, very cheap for residents comparing to other cities because they're charging the businesses um, more. Um, so residents don't pay a lot. And also there's a lot of free activities like my friends here mentioned um, that the municipality provides. Um, so even if you like culture, um, it's a lot of the things are subsidized um, for Olim Chadashim, for example, or for uh, people who are retired. Um, so there are a lot of benefits and you can find your way here. 
um, without spending a lot of money, like being a tourist and you know like going everywhere every day. Um, but the rent is pretty expensive. And if you want to buy a place, it is also expensive. And also the market is um, getting more and more uh, expensive because a lot of buildings are being renovated. Now they're building the light rail in Tel Aviv, which uh, is a little annoying for our, us for our residents sometimes because a lot of balagan and, uh, and noise, but it's going to be amazing once uh, we have it. It's supposed to start in a year, I think from now. Um, and it's just going to make things so much easier and nicer here also. Um, so this is the time. It's just going to be worse and more expensive if you don't do it right now, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Terry. Thank you. Um, I made Aliyah about 40 years ago also. I live in the Ramat Aviv, Neve Avivim area. Yes, life here is expensive, but there's some wonderful things that happen when you live in a part or a section of Tel Aviv. You get to know who sells you your bread. You get to know your grocer. You have a butcher. You can, the, the, the personal interaction that you have once you settle down in the neighborhood, you go to the, the market. I go to the Carmel market and I've been going for many years and there are sellers that know me. Hi, how are you? I mean, you know, I'm in North Tel Aviv. I go to South Tel Aviv. It's fantastic. Tel Aviv is a neighborhood. When you live here, you live among people. You don't live by yourself. Um, I say good morning to my neighbors. It's all the things that I remember having as a, a younger person in New York when I lived in a neighborhood. Tel Aviv is magic. My husband who formerly worked at Habima could take a bus and be at work in 15 minutes. Um, wherever you live in Tel Aviv, accessibility is, is fantastic. Uh, culturally, I lived in New York. Living in Tel Aviv was my only option. The cultural activities, not only that are here permanently, but that come from all over the world, are, are, can't be beat, can't be beat. Uh, food, <laughs> if you like food, this is the place to be. You can have anything from Chinese, to Japanese, to Korean, to Mexican, to Yemenite, Iraqi, any kind of food you want here and kosher. I don't want to repeat what everybody else has said, but believe me, this is the city of cities. I don't know. I feel like you've wrapped it. up and said it all. Miriam, you should consider moving to Tel Aviv by now. I, I don't know. I have to say, it, it's very enticing. I have to say, in this area alone, we have five different synagogues. We have ultra-Orthodox, Orthodox, Masorti. We have Reform and Sephardic. We have five different synagogues within walking distance in just in this neighborhood. We have a mixed community. Doesn't matter what you look like or what you do. Everybody says hello and it's friendly. It's wonderful. Lovely. Anybody care to just wrap it up, adding one particular highlight or something that you'd like to leave our listeners with this evening? Anyone? Phyllis, as the newest Ola, what's been your favorite? Oh my gosh, I live in Israel moment. Oh, I, I, oh, don't, don't put me on the spot that way because actually there are lots of them. We, we, and it is all this, I will say it is all the small moments is really what it is. That every day, just about that we are here, some interaction occurs where a kindness or a smile, or as somebody had said before, four people offering to give you advice about how to get to a place or do a thing or whatever. It's, it's the accumulation of those small things. And I think that, that Terry said it well when she talked about it being in a neighborhood and you sort of know who, you know who your neighbors are, you know who is selling you your produce, you know the butcher, the, the baker. It's, it is a really, there's a Hebrew word, amiti, that something is very authentic. And I, we, we feel that we are blessed to be living this very authentic life here. And so that's probably more than just a short summary, but I'll stop. Excellent. Uh, there is something else I must say, that there's a lot of familial interaction. We have the city and because there's familial 
familial interaction as a, a third generation person with grandchildren, there are so many activities that happen in Tel Aviv that work for both of us that uh, it reinforces the fact that there's family and you're living in a city and wow, you can do almost anything. Nice. Yeah. It sounds like everybody would agree that Tel Aviv has someone for any, for something for everyone, zero to 120, whether they're single, whether they're married, they're retired, they're not retired, they want to volunteer. Is that correct? Yeah. Excellent. I, I'd like to add something. I think that Tel Aviv is the ultimate melting pot. I know that Israel is considered as a melting pot in, in general, but walking through the streets of Tel Aviv or the neighborhoods, you're going to come across people from all over. And having been here for almost 40 years, I'm still wowed by this every time. You hear the different languages, you start to recognize the people, you understand where they're from by their gestures, by the way they talk. And, it, and it's just amazing. It's just this little microcosm, uh, a fabulous microcosm. And, and definitely I would highly recommend it to whoever wants to come and try this brave new world. I think that's the best ending ever. I wanna thank everyone, our, our panelists, Netta as the Tel Aviv Municipal Coordinator and all of you who participated today, thank you so much. We look forward to being in touch with you at Nefesh Benefesh. Never hesitate to be in touch with us. And as I said, you'll be receiving the reporting from Josh Sussman in the next day or two with everybody's contact information, Ezra information, excuse me. <coughs> and don't be a stranger. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.